great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. About half of you believe that, I think. That's what it's down to. So you can prove it here. Everybody stand this morning. Join in with us. Tap your toe, clap your hands. You know how we are. Run the aisles. We don't care. Join in with us. Worship this morning. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Till I met you, I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb. Till I met you. Called my name and I ran out of that grave. Hey. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the dark. Your mercy has saved my soul. Amen. And now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name. rescue my sin was heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter I was an orphan now you call me citizen of heaven when I was broken you were my healing now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future my eyes are open Good morning, church. Aren't you glad? And I'm just going to let you fill in the blank this morning. Aren't you just glad? Amen. Amen. God is good, church. God is good. Always has been, always will be. He will not change. It will not change. We are so glad you are here today. Uh, A lot of things we're going to do this morning. Uh, Most importantly, we're going to worship because that's what it's about. 
Uh, I want to remind you of a couple of things. Prayer meeting this evening at 5 o'clock. Evening service at 6 o'clock tonight. We're having a baptism at the end of service. But uh, we're, we're going to have actually three prayers before we ever get started. Okay? I want you to, if you will, I want you to turn around and look in the back. They slipped in on you. That's children's church, okay? That's children's church, and I asked them to come in this morning because we are have, we're going to have our school prayer this morning. And this school prayer is not just for them, not just for all people working and associated with the schools, but it's for all of us. I believe we all need prayer this morning. So with those children in mind, I'm going to ask anyone that is associated with school work in any way, whether it's teacher, custodial, kitchen, whether it's whether you are a room mom, whatever it might be, if you have an association with school of any kind, would you please stand for me right now? Amen. Amen. Yes. Just, just remain standing, if you will, for me. Just I know, I know you all love that. I didn't ask you to come up front, so, you know, give me credit. We are so blessed as a church to have this many people associated with a variety of school districts in, in, in whatever capacity they serve. They are there to serve. If you're a teacher today, you're not doing it for the money. Because they're not paying you enough to endure what you guys are having to endure. But you are a teacher because you love children. And you're a teacher more importantly because you love the Lord. And you've been given this opportunity to to, uh, lead by example. Because that's what you're doing. You're leading by example. So we want to pray for you guys. We want to pray for these young people. We want to pray for all of the school districts all over. The children that... That God would just bless you guys. That God would give you grace beyond what you possess. Would give you strength. Would give you abilities beyond your capabilities. And would give you the ability to have the right words at just the right time for the right situation. So you guys remain standing. Let's pray this morning. You all pray with me. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you. For these men and women who stand before us this morning, for the burdens they bear, for the cross they carry, for the profession they feel called into. And we ask, God, your richest and most abundant blessings upon them and upon this school year. God, we pray for them. We lift them up. We want them to know that every day we're praying for them. We're holding them up before you. We're calling out their names as they teach our children, as they teach our grandchildren, as they teach our extended families. Lord, we pray that you would just bless them, that you would surround them with your spirit each and every day that they walk the halls of that school, that that even children, even young people would know there's something different about Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so. They always have a smile and they're happy. They're not, they're not ever, hardly ever in a bad mood. And Lord, we, we realize that's hard today. It just is. So God, we pray that you would bless them. Hold them in your hand this year, Lord, especially this year. There's so much division is out there, Lord. May them, may them not be the dividing factor. May they be the thing that shows unity. May your love shine through them in such a glorious and bright way that they don't have to say a word, but that all those round about could see you alive and living in them. And Father, for our children, we pray grace upon them. We pray protection upon them. We pray strength and encouragement to them. Lord, may they learn, may they enjoy, and may they grow, Father, in wisdom and knowledge, but also in you, because you place the right people in the right place at the right time. We want to be encouraged on behalf of our teachers that God knew where you guys were going to be at this point in history. And God doesn't put anybody any place that doesn't equip them to be there. 
So walk in that strength and walk in that grace. And this we ask and pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you all very, very much for what you do and for your efforts. Children's Church, thank you for coming in and joining us. You guys can be dismissed. We so very much appreciate all of you and all the efforts for everyone in Children's Church. All right. Our second prayer, just as important as the first. God is still moving upon young men and young women to enlist in the military. And years and years ago, even back before my day, so you know how long that is a long ago, they had a draft. Now it's all voluntary. And we have a young man who has decided that's the direction the Lord wants him to go. So, Andrew, would you stand up for me, please? You can come up here if you want to, or you don't have to. Yeah, there you go. Good boy. I'm going to stay on this step so many of you are about the same height. <laughs> okay? This young man's name is Andrew Clark. Andrew is leaving tomorrow, aren't you? Mm -hmm. All right, see this hair? Last time you're going to see it for a while. <laughs> it's all right, dude. It'll, it'll, it'll grow back. He is going to Fort Jackson in South Carolina for his basic training. Then he's going to Fort Lee for his AIT. And then he's going to beautiful, scenic Alaska <laughs> for his duty station. He's enlisting in the Army. And we want him to go with the knowledge of how proud we are of him. And we want him to know, I want you to look around at all these people. I want you to look up there at that camera up there. There's, there's millions watching you right now. <laughs> And it's a good thing because they're all going to be praying for you. We want you to remember every day, the days you think those people are trying to kill you in basic, we're praying for you. The days you think, oh, this, this, is, this is not the thing I should have done, we're praying for you. The days that you realize, I'm right where God wants me, we're praying for you. The whole time you're gone, this bunch, this church, will be praying for you. And one more thing, we're also going to be praying for your mom, too. Because mm -hmm. you're doing it, but she's doing it without you. Okay, so we're going to pray for them also, all right? All right. You pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for young men and young women still willing to serve their country and to serve you at the same time. We pray, Lord, that you would raise up a hedge round about Andrew. That as he goes on this great adventure, God, you would go with him. That you would protect him every step. That you would, he would literally feel your presence every place he goes and everything that he does. And Father, I just pray that you would surround him with your love, surround him with your grace, surround him with your strength. That as he goes, Father, he would go in your name. That he would realize he's an example for you. And may he, Lord, May he lead by example. May they just see you as they see him. Father, we pray for him. Help him to know that every day that he's gone, that he's not really gone, that we're right there with him. It's his cross to carry, but that we're there to help him carry it through. Bless him with your love. Bless him with your grace. Bless him with your strength. And Father, protect him in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. God bless you, young man. All right, now we're going to pray for this service. Now we're going to pray for needs. We're going to pray for people who need a touch. Uh, I received some very devastating news this morning about a local family had a three-month-old baby pass away. I want you to remember the Borm family. I want you to hold them up. Uh, I've known the grandfather almost my entire life. So you pray for them. Very unexpected. Very unexpected. It happened, I think, Friday, if I understand correctly. So you pray for the Borm family, and I believe also for the Martin family. Lift them up in prayer. Pray for all these people up on this stage.
Pray that the message and the music would go forth. Pray that we would be exactly where, we're, where we need to be, doing exactly what we need to be doing. Pray for those that are getting baptized later on, that baptism would, would deepen their walk with Christ. And pray for the people around you, just, just, the, just the ones real close to you right here. Pray for them, that we would all just worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords who is worthy to be praised. So you bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are serving the only God that's able, the only God that as we pray to you can send answers to our prayers. And we lift up this morning these families who are grieving so very much and ask that you would touch them, that your hand would rest upon them, that you would give them grace and strength. Lord, we're not even going to ask for understanding because we don't believe it'll be there. They're, not, they're never going to understand, but help them to allow you to comfort them and sustain them and carry them through this very, very difficult time. We pray this morning for each person who has a need. We pray for those joining us online. We ask that you would just bless their homes, bless their households. We pray for these people upon this stage, God, that there would be an anointing, an anointing fall upon them, that an excitement would overwhelm their spirit this morning, that as they sing the words, that the words would literally come alive this morning. As we hear the message in the music, God, that we would be willing to receive it, that we would be willing to embrace it, and we would be willing to put it into practice in our lives, irregardless of what anybody else says or chooses to do, that we would make up our mind today we're serving you each and every day. When it's easy, we're going to do it, and when it's not easy, we're still going to do it even more. Father, we pray for your grace, that it might surround us. We pray for your love, that it might encourage us. We pray, Father, for the excitement of heaven to fall upon this place, that we glorify you as the angels in heaven are doing so and will continue to do so for eternity. Lead us and guide us. Help us to honor you by what we say and what we do that the name of Jesus be glorified. Amen. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring He's worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say he's worthy. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no worthy and worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you and we sing
through the rubble and the wreckage I've forgotten who I was You reached out for my hand And found me in the dark My soul had given up You wouldn't leave me undone Rebuilder My walls were crumbling Restorer You brought again my shelter my warmth in the coldest night my helper you held me up till I could stand on the promise that you are rebuilding me and I have seen the dawn Start to break between the cracks The beginnings of the day Never thought would come to pass You brought me back to life You are the morning There's a window in the 
heaven I can close my eyes and see Where there are no earthly struggles And the soul there is set free Where the deaf and dumb are shouting Because the blind can finally see All those crippled legs are dancing All across that crystal sea Now there's a special place in heaven Where those unborn babies play And they're rocked in arms by mamas Whose chance had slipped away And all those unwanted children They say my dad smiles on all their faces as they spin around and sing now don't that sound like heaven always on Oh, the price of heaven is expensive But don't you worry It was paid in full by Jesus When he hung upon that old cross And all the things that he promised Will be their life just like he said As an eternal of the precious blood he shed now don't that sound like heaven
song again. Now I'll be the first to tell you I don't have all the answers. And I'll be the first to admit there's more I don't know than I do know. But what I do know is this. When he sang that song about heaven this morning, something moved deep down in me. I am closer today than I was yesterday to heaven. I am. And you are. And to know that this life was not in vain. No matter what you accomplished or what you didn't accomplish, if you're going to heaven, this life was not in vain. To know that we have These people working in these schools, going back into what they're going back into with Jesus with them, teaching our kids, teaching our grandkids, it's it's, it's important, it matters. Not understanding so much, but knowing what I know is how you get through everyday people. Because if you don't think we're in a battle, you're in worse shape than you know. I'm telling you, we win. We win. No matter what, we win. No matter how hard every day gets, we still win. No matter when it looks like we're losing, we're eventually going to win. 
No matter how deep and how dark it's got, we're still going to win. No matter how low the devil has drugged you down, you're still going to win. You need to know that. You need to understand that. You need to be able to look up and see that God is still God on your worst day. That God is still God. We are in a battle for eternity-bound souls. That's our soul battle. That's our soul purpose. That is our goal, to win people to Jesus. You know, you win people to Jesus, you love them. You love them when they're easy, and you love them even more when they're not easy. Everybody can love somebody that, you know, that's real cute and looks like a puppy. We got to learn to love them when they're unlovable. To embrace them when they um, don't want to be embraced. To pray for them when they tell you to leave them alone. Because God hears and answers the prayers of His people. Let's let's do this. Let's do this heaven song again. There's a window into heaven I can close my eyes and see Where there are no earthly struggles And the soul there is set free Where the deaf and dumb are Cause the blind can finally see All those crippled legs are dancing All across that crystal sea Now there's a special place in heaven Where those unborn babies play And they're rocked in arms by mama Whose chance had slipped away And all those unwanted children They say my They spin around and sing. Now don't that sound like heaven? The light that's always on. The price of heaven is expensive, but don't you worry about the cost. It was paid in full by Jesus 
when he hung upon that cross and all the things he Of the precious blood he shed. Now don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Where the Son of God is reigning, and those tears are fine. Now don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Darkness there is overtaken by the light that's always on. Darkness there is overtaken. By the light that's always My words to Matt, it don't make sense, but this is the one we're going to do right now. One thing in my life I want more than anything else in my life is I want to be more like Jesus. I am so tired of being like me. It gets old, and it's a lot of effort. I want to be like him. I want people to see him and not me. I want them to know him and not me. I want this church to be known about him and not about who's on stage and not about who pastors and not about who sits in the pews. <laughs> we need to be a little more like Jesus, people. You know, the thing is, we can be. There's no reason we can't be a little more like Jesus. I mean, for goodness sake, we're already created in his image. So what is the big problem? Well, I ain't going to talk about y'all. I'll talk about me. I know what my big problem is. My big problem is me. My biggest hindrance to me being like Jesus is me. I'm going to blame it on y'all because we're all looking for somebody to blame, ain't we, brother? But I know my problem. And as much as I want to blame it on y'all, it ain't y'all's fault. It's my fault. I am not like Jesus because I'm not choosing to be like Jesus. Are you like Jesus or are you choosing not to be like Jesus? I know y'all wish I'd just have stayed on the stage today. This song has been on my mind for three days. This is not the message I brought, but this is the one that was supposed to be preached today. Let's do that song, Greg. Where I talk a talk that I don't want and 
miss some moments right before my eyes Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped Somebody with a hand that I could have felt When I just can't see past myself Lord help me be a little more like mercy A little more like grace a little more like kindness and goodness, love and faith. A little more like patience, a little more like peace. A little more like Jesus, a little less like me. Yeah, there's no denying I have changed I've been saved from who I used to be But even at my best I must confess I still need help to see the way you see Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped Somebody with a hand that I should have held When I just can't see past myself Lord, help me be A little more like mercy A little more like grace A little more like kindness and Goodness, love and faith A little more like patience A little more like peace A little more like tears a little less like me Oh, to feed the beggar on the street Love to be your hands and feet Freely to give what I receive Lord, help me be I want to put you first above all else Love my neighbor as myself In the moments no one sees Lord, help me be A little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love and faith, a little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus, a little less like me, a little more like living everything. A little more like Jesus, a little less like me. Oh, a little less like me. Jenny, put those words back up there uh, right before the chorus says a little more grace, a little more mercy. Somewhere right in there. Oh, yeah, right there. A little more mercy. Do you know what that word mercy means? Well, it means get over yourself. It's really what it means. It means just, you just need to get over you. You need to learn to extend a little mercy. It, mercy is forgiveness. And without it, none of us would be saved. None of us would be the children of God that we are without mercy. God showed us mercy. Maybe we need to show a little mercy too. You know, we need to, we need to show a little forgiveness. We need to just get over it and move on and let it go because and, and, and it's gone. And then we need a little more grace. Grace is the ability to have mercy. All right. You can't have mercy without you have grace. A little more like kindness, goodness, love, and faith. Holy cow. Kindness. We got these signs stuck all over the place. You see them. Kindness. Looks good, don't it? Have that sign in your front yard, you know. You could put a plastic on the back of your car. All looks good. But it don't matter if we ain't doing it. Do we know what kindness is? To be kind, to be nice one to another. 
goodness, love and faith. A little more like patience. I didn't even know they used that word anymore. Patience, really? We ain't got time for that. We got stuff to do. We got places to go. I mean, don't they know how busy I am? Well, preacher, you're retired. I'm still pretty doggone busy. We're all busy, aren't we? You know, I'm learning. I I always thought I was smarter than this, but I'm not. I am a slow learner. You know how I feel about the drive-thru. Well, Crystal and I were in the drive-thru the other night, and and she don't even know this. I am so I didn't say a word. We're three cars back, and I see the person at the little window there with her phone in her hand. And I thought, oh Lord, she got a modern day list. <laughs> and I didn't say a word. I thought a lot. I didn't say a word. And I remember when I was a kid, I went to school with some with some girls who went to church at Mount Moriah, church I was saved at. And I, I remember it, and it's been all these years ago, but I remember it. This one kept telling me, Eddie, thinking it's as bad as saying it. And that's what come to my mind from, gosh, 50 some odd years ago now about what I thought there. I was so proud because I didn't say anything, thinking it's as bad as saying it. And that's true. Here I thought I'm learning patience. Put my words back up. I'm lost without them. Thank you. A little more like peace. Honestly. When is the last time you truly felt at peace? for longer than five minutes. Do you have peace? Do you want peace? Because it, you, you can have it if you want it. It's yours. Jesus promised the peace that passes all understanding. Why don't we have it? Because basically we need to leave, be a little more like Jesus. Jesus. And a whole lot less like me. Why do you think the world is more concerned? You know, we live in a, in a me first society right now. What about me? What about me? What about how I feel? What about what I think? What about what I want? And we don't seem to care about anybody else. Now, I've read this book. I've read it a lot. I've studied it. I, I, I've tried to dig deeper into it. And the deeper I go, the more I'm finding it's never been about me. So if Jesus is teaching it's not about me and it's not about us, who is it that's teaching it is about us? Well, there's only one who tried to make it about him, and that's why he's not in heaven anymore. You see, the devil himself started out in heaven. And he got kicked out. Why? Because he tried to make it about us. Him. What about me? I don't know what that tells you. I know what it tells me. This, this, this modern day theology is not all it's cracked up to be now, is it? This is what matters right here. This is what matters. To be like Jesus. Are we? Are we showing Jesus? Not in here. I mean out there. It's, it's easy in here. What about out there? Are are we showing Jesus? Can they tell who we are by how we act, by how we talk, by how we conduct ourselves? They need to see Jesus because they may or may not ever ever come in here. But you run into them out there. All right? Now, it's our choice. You're going to know the song you're doing, right? Good. Do I know it? Okay, good. Tell me what it is. Oh, I like that song. Oh, people. Okay, Jenny, go ahead and put their words up for them.
Stand up with me. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. As I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe. No weapon 
that is formed against you is going to prosper. Do you know why? Because it's not your battle. It's his. And he'll fight it for you. If you just get out of the way, he'll handle it. People say, well, I'm, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just down. There's no sin in following people. The sin is in not getting up and going again. We had a preacher, a speaker named Les Brown. He said, when the devil knocks you down, pray you're laying on your back so you can keep swinging while you're down and get back up and go again, people. That's what it's about. It's not our battle. It's his. And he will fight it. We are on the winning side. Y'all need to understand, if you don't remember nothing else about this except the, the wonderful music, you remember this. You matter. Amen. You matter. God has a plan for you, and you matter. You make a difference. More than you know, you make a difference, and you matter. And yes, you're under attack, but see it for what it is and not how it feels. Your enemy is only attacking you because he doesn't have you anymore. If everything's just wonderful all the time, I don't know. But see it for what it is, not for how it feels, not for how it makes you feel. All right, I, I got so much more to say, but we got stuff to do. Y'all can sit down. We've got two people going to be baptized this morning. Uh, you got a, a song to get them ready? Of course you do. So, Gunner, wherever you're at, you're over in this area someplace. You go ahead and get, go back and get ready. Karen, you go on back and get ready. And we're going to baptize these, these two this morning. And, and you say, well, what? Let, me, let me just take a minute here. You say, well, why, why are we baptizing? Why, why do we baptize? Baptism is not salvation. Well, I tell them all the same thing, especially the little ones. I tell them being baptized without being saved is just like taking a shower with your clothes on. Don't do nothing but get you wet for no reason. Don't clean you. But being baptized after salvation. You know what that is? That is being like Jesus. Because there's a lot of reason to be baptized, but if for no other reason... They want to be baptized because Jesus was baptized. And I want to be like Jesus. And a little less like me. Amen. Battle Belongs was the song we were going to do here. But this is pretty fitting too, I think. Amen. Sing it with us. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody.
sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Now sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Let's sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Let's sing a little louder. We have two people going to be baptized this morning. This first young man's name is Gunnar Walt. And when they told me what grade he was going into in school, I like to fell over. Because Gunnar's always been this little guy running around here, and he's going to be a freshman in high school. And I told Gunnar, I'm awful glad you're the only one getting older, that's you and not me. Yeah, that's what he did, too. He laughed. Gunnar was on his way to church with Grandma, and Grandma finally just got to the point, she said, Gunner, have you ever been saved? Just about a month or so ago, right? And Gunner said, no, but I'd like to be. Well, now, Gloria is trying to drive the car, trying to shout, trying to pray with Gunner, and remembering to keep her eyes open while she's driving, because we pray with her eyes closed. But on the way to church, Grandma led him to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Then a little while later, Grandma said, Gunner, you ever been baptized? Gunner said, no, but I'd like to be. So that's where we're at right here, right now. And I've sat and talked with Gunner, and he understands that this baptism is not salvation, it's just the next step is a public profession to all of you of the change that took place in his life. So, Gunnar, do you believe that Jesus has saved you? Yes. He says, yes, he does. So, Gunnar, I'm going to baptize you now, my brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Yes. Whoa. Yep. Got one more. There you go. This young lady's name is Karen Winters, and Karen and her husband came to us a few years ago, and we don't know what the future holds, but sadly. Not that long after Karen had been here, she lost her husband. And she has told me countless times 
that she believes the Lord sent them here because you people made such a difference to carry her through a very, very difficult time in her life. And I believe God always knows what he's doing, always. And I believe God's timing is, uh, is perfect, it's without question. So sometimes we don't understand how come and why things are going on, but God always knows what he's doing. And Karen's baptism, this is not her first time she's ever been baptized. This is a recommittal baptism that she is telling all of you, recommitting her commitment to the Lord and recommitting her commitment to you guys for all you have helped her with, for all you have helped her get through, for your prayers. And she wants you to know that as much as you are praying for her, she's also praying for you. So Karen, I now rebaptize you as still my sister. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Woo! This time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation we believe, we believe.
prayer this morning is that you do believe that, especially that last part about him coming again. Oh my. If you don't believe, stick around for a little while. Try to explain to me what you do believe in then. Let me try to explain to you what I do believe in then, and we'll see where it goes from there. How's that? Thank you for being here today. Thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you guys for just being who you are. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And thank you guys for just being who you are also. Because you matter. You make a difference. Let's make a difference in this world. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great week. Prayer meeting.